Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 149 of the Best Games Period. This week, I am joined. I, I'm. I'm. Well, a. I'm your host, Jack Gardner, and b. I am joined by <laughs> Joseph Yaden. Hello. Um. Hi, Joseph. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you having me. Uh. It's really bizarre to get invited onto a show, like, just based on internet connections. Like, I mean, if, if, you, if you zoom out, you're just like, okay, I click on a mouse in a certain spot, and I type on a keyboard in a certain way, and then now I'm on a podcast. Like, it's just yep. really crazy to think about how that works. And, like, that's how, I was, that's how I had a roommate at PAX, and that's how, like, it's just weird. Like, you, it's, you know, the internet's awesome. I love it. Yeah, and I mean, like, it, it's one of those things where... On the one hand, it's awesome, and on the other hand, it bugs me a little bit, just because, like, there are a lot of really talented people in the industry, um, and our industry is just so insular and small, and, sure. like, it, it's it's hard to, if, if you aren't known by other people from, like, attending events and, like, socializing, mm -hmm. and you just try and, like, keep your head down and work, you aren't necessarily going to, like make these connections that are so important yeah um and on the flip side of that then you have people who realize that and then take the socializing aspect way too far and like kind of become these people who aren't necessary are, aren't genuine yeah if, if that makes they're like, sense they're like, like a character you know yeah like a character and like you can tell that they're just trying to use you and it sucks. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's probably a podcast episode in and of itself right there talking about <laughs> networking and stuff, but yeah, I'm with you. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not enough to just be an awesome writer. I mean, you could be objectively the best writer in the world, but if you suck at networking, you're, you probably won't get anywhere here, which, yeah, I feel that that's frustrating. So. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's a lesson that took me a really long time to learn, just because, like, I've been the senior editor at Extra Life for, like, eight years? Seven years now? And I don't think anybody knew that until, like, two years ago. Um, huh. Because I just, I would go to events, keep my head down, do my work, which involved, like, you know, going around the floor, interviewing people going back to my hotel room and like typing until I fell asleep. And it's like, well, I was, I'm, I'm really, really good at my job, but I'm also not making those connections with people. So like people don't know that any of my work exists. Right. And now my website that I wrote for, for like, you know, the last five years has been deleted and no longer exists. So jeez, yeah, it, it's a, it's a weird industry to get into. It is. And I honestly don't recommend it. <laughs> is that weird to say? <laughs> like, I don't like, I, no, I don't think it's weird to say. I, I hear people like just sort of like offhand or, you know, they like passively are like, huh, writing about video games. That's interesting. And I'm like, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Please, <laughs> you don't, you, trust me. Sorry if you hear sirens. Like I said, I live in just oh, shit fine. ass, shit, dick, <laughs> shitty, methy, shit ass. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh can we swear sorry i didn't know yeah go for oh, it it's too late now i guess right okay oh yeah, yeah it, it, right. it's fine i, I <laughs> swear swear as much as you want um this podcast is no longer on a website where children might listen to it accidentally and if they uh, do well they were gonna hear about weren't. it anyway I, I mean yeah yeah you were gonna hear those <laughs> words eventually <laughs> so uh joseph where 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 might people know you from uh, probably from PlayStation Lifestyle. Um, I, I actually don't work there anymore, but um, I worked there for close to a year and a half as a news writer. Um, and yeah, I just parted ways with them. No bad blood or anything like that. Uh, just I was tired. I know that's a lame <laughs> answer, but like I'm just I'm just real tired, man. Because I have a, a day job as well, like a full time okay. day job, and a partner and a how. It's like it's all this stuff that I just. At what do some you, point, what do you do for your day job? Um, so I work for a textbook company. Okay. Um, just dealing with like student accounts and stuff, really boring stuff. But I'm grateful to have it, and I'm grateful right now, especially because I'm able to do it remotely. Um, obviously, right now is not an awesome time for people 
in terms of working work wise. So yeah, I'm I'm super grateful to have that. But obviously, yeah, doing games and writing about games is like my goal. But yeah, uh, PlayStation Lifestyle. Um, I've done uh, wikis for IGN, and I also have my own podcast called Active Quest that you guys might have heard of as well. Ooh, what what is kind of what what's the elevator pitch for Active Quest? Like, what are you what are you talking about? Well, so we focus on days. news a lot just because, like, that's my bread and butter, um, and you know, as a news writer. And then mm-hmm. we, you know, talk about what we've been playing and that kind of thing. I, it's it's uh, it's so hard to stand out as a podcast, you know, with a video game podcast because they all start to sound the same. So I would hope yeah. that <laughs> I would hope that one would identify with it just just for who the 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 panel is right like just for mm-hmm. the people there so we've got a, a nice british boy on there as well as uh, uh another person who is who's very into politics so and then me i'm i don't know how to describe myself <laughs> i guess there but it's a nice sort of balance and i feel like we cover things um you know pretty broadly so yeah, yeah. you have a good dynamic going yeah exactly um well it's awesome to have you on it's just kind of the, the weird weird times and weird situations and everything is kind of up in the air right now so sure yeah um have has any of the news like you're a news guy has any of the news coming out recently really like raised your eyebrows or are you kind of god what, yeah what's up what's my, on your mind from news my eyebrows are pretty much permanently raised right now, right now i look like mr potato head with the, with the <laughs> permanent raised eyebrows right now because there's just a lot i mean obviously the last of us being delayed it, just the last of us being delayed in and of itself is wild but it's delayed indefinitely that's yeah. wild I, to me well also a lot of the news coming out of naughty dog recently has been very strange mm-hmm and it, it feels like they're slowly leaking goodwill. Yeah, it's so tough. I, like, I'm not in PR. I don't know anything about that. They're obviously a lot smarter than I am in that regard. So, like, maybe I'm wrong about this. But, yeah, I would. I also kind of agree that I feel like Naughty Dog and Sony are just kind of slipping up in the PR field. Um, very strange. Also, um, tied to that delay uh, was Iron Man VR. Uh, that's another yep. game that's just been sort of up in the air for, I guess, like a year now. It feels like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I along with that, I feel like Avenger that Avengers game that was slated. <laughs> that yeah. that that feels like a huge bloated disaster. Yeah, just waiting to happen. I don't think it's going to capture people the way it would. It might have if it had come out like three years ago. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, when you when when something's hot. It's not like you just can flip something out in the next day or so. It takes, like, I mean, think of, like, Battle Royale. Like, all these Battle Royale games that are still, I guess, coming out. Like, dude, you're done, man. It's it's done. <laughs> yeah, the market can't. has been thoroughly cornered. <laughs> you can't. I mean, Call of Duty managed to do it with Warzone, but that's because it's Call of Duty, right? I, there's right. pretty and much... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you, you can't. You gotta move on. Pick a different thing, man. Move on. Yeah. Definitely with you. Um... So that's been kind of uh, on my mind and then sort of tied to, well, obviously that's because of COVID, right? But mm-hmm. but tied to that, just all this other stuff that's going along with that, um, you know, w- is that going to be the, is that going to be the last major delay? Probably not. I wouldn't be surprised if Cyberpunk doesn't come out uh, when it's supposed to. Wouldn't be surprised uh, if the... I, I think I would be surprised if it doesn't come out when it's supposed to just oh because, really huh. just because cd project red a seems like the kind of company that is going to force their workers to finish it and get it out on their platform because they do not i don't think they give as much of a fuck about like scheduling as maybe sony does yeah especially because mm-hmm. their con their release isn't directly necessarily tied to a console launch sure yeah, um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised either way, I guess is what I should say. Like, yeah, it, you're probably right. It'll probably come out on time. But if tomorrow CD Projekt Red says, hey, we're delaying our game indefinitely, I would be like, sure, sure mm-hmm. you are. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised. And then also tied to that uh, is wh- whether or not the new boxes are coming out on time as well, which apparently they're supposed to still come out this year, but uh. I'm, I'm, I I would take anything that is announced for the fall of this year 
with a huge grain of salt because sure. I, I mean, like people, I remember when we started going into kind of like this self isolation style of living and they were saying it was going to be like two weeks and now the two weeks has turned into, well, it's going to be, you know, you're going to have stay at home orders until, uh, you know, May. And it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but then other experts are coming out and talking about, well, actually, you know, we're not going to see results of this until mid-May, which means we're most likely going to keep on doing this way <laughs> yeah. longer than May. Like, we're right. probably going to be still in this in June or August. And a big part of that is because we ha our, our country has not really dealt with this crisis very well at all. And they're not staying the fuck home. <laughs> right. Well, look, that's the other thing. Like, there was in, in the general news the other day, like, the governor of Georgia didn't know that there was even such a thing as asymptomatic people. And that's why he yeah. shut down, finally shut down everything. And it's just like, how did, how did you not know that? Like, <laughs> that it's one of the super basic things. And that's why we're closing things down. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And so then... It, Going back to The Last of Us, uh, from what I gathered on that, um, is it had a lot to do with um, retail, uh, like the retail shipment of the game. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty much done from what I from what I can tell. Like obviously, there's always stuff you can do on the game, but the the main portion is that you know a lot of these retail stores are closed right now, and so they can't get their game out on store shelves, and so. As somebody who's been pretty much all digital for the past couple years, my initial immediate gut reaction is, oh, just release it digitally. But then I'm, I'm like, no, 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 wait, hold on a second. No, no, that doesn't make any sense. Because, yeah, like, although digital games are trending upward, physical sales still make up a huge portion of these companies' revenue. And so, yeah, they probably can't afford to, you know, not sell it at a GameStop or an Amazon or whatever it is. But I'd be curious to see uh how digital sales will have changed based you know based off of what's been going on lately because uh, you yeah. know obviously the final fantasy uh 7 thing where you know it was uh, people might not be getting their games on time and whatever you know you can't go out that's a whole thing right so like i feel like digital games are just going to they're, they're going to skyrocket and then places like a GameStop or a, or whatever other if there's a, another mom and pop store will probably be in bad shape you know, you know, I think that the mom and pop stores will largely be fine, specifically because a lot of mom and pop shops um, have um, like embraced retro gaming and kind of like vintage games and like tabletop gaming and all, all, all these different things. Not saying that they're not going to be affected by this at all. Like, yeah. obviously, everyone is going to be affected by this in a negative way. But um, I think large corporate chains like GameStop. I know that and th this this is kind of along the same lines that I've been seeing some um I've been seeing some some job losses happen yeah. and the announcements behind them have been like oh this isn't related to COVID. <laughs> um it it's you know we were planning to close these 300 stores anyway. And it's like well I'm sure that this hurried the process along. Right. Yeah, and and like, okay, say it's not, you know, anything to do with COVID. Well, that's still not a great look for your company that you're shutting down. Like last year, it was something like, I don't like two hundred stores or whatever that closed. Like yeah. they're obviously not in good shape. I used to work there actually. I worked there for five oh, really? years. Yeah, and it's just so interesting to see like whatever their practices are during this and you know how they I, I saw this story i don't know if this is true or not i didn't really look into it but where they're they're telling their employees to wear plastic bags on their hands or something to to prevent from I'm like what i just can't be real i don't know but i just remember when i worked there they were really pushy and you would get in trouble if you didn't do certain things you know mm -hmm. um obviously like the pre-order thing was like always a big annoyance but like there was this one period where uh, we were the company was, I guess, so desperate for for people trading in their games or selling their games to the stores that 
they would have employees walk up to every customer in the store and hand them a what, what was referred to as a trade flyer and it basically had like a breakdown of like the hottest games and their trade values and like you know the benefits of trade trading in your games all that but they were like taking it really seriously and it was to the point where like you know people lost their jobs over not doing it and it's like come on dude like come on <laughs> so well, yeah. yeah like part part of it part of gamestop's problem is that it's owned by like this huge conglomerate company mm-hmm. and it's i am i i i know just from like get, what gamestop managers different gamestop store managers have told me that their locations are profitable it's just that they're not as profitable as uh you know their corporate overlords would like them to be yeah that was always the thing i remember my the store manager would like he would get a bonus if they reached x amount of profits or whatever and like they never they never did because they were just outlandish and our store in particular was like the second busiest in the district so we were like we always did really well but no we can't make you know whatever the your crazy expectations are no we can't meet that and so my my boss would always get screwed out of his bonus you know so it just sucks when you have all these unrealistic expectations and all that but yeah part of me is like yeah fuck them <laughs> like, like <laughs> yeah that's fine yeah i mean go digital i mean I, I think just even zooming out like not looking at just gamestop or amazon or whatever just zooming out and looking at like yeah, you're, it's it's better to go all digital. I mean, it's less expensive for these publishers uh, to, to and developers and all this to put their games out digitally. Uh, obviously, you don't have to pay for discs and shipping and the packaging and the, the cases and the boxes and whatever. And you might then start see you might might start seeing games drop in price. Like maybe maybe Resident Evil Three that just came out. If it were digital only, it might come out at forty bucks. Mm-hmm. You know. But they have to keep that sixty dollar price point right now because they don't want to screw their relationship with these retailers. Right. And as long as retailers are are a thing, your digital games are still probably going to be a full price. You know. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah, and so let me ask you something. Like you occupy kind of this same internet writing space that I do, um, and I I have been kind of predicting over the last couple weeks that we are going to see like i mean not just predicting but i've also been experiencing that like freelance work has largely started to dry up um for like websites and stuff like that there are there are some that still are taking freelance pitches um and are like still functioning normally but we're starting to see some companies laying off editors or staff um and I I'm just kind of wondering like what what your take is on on this situation because the company has claimed that it has nothing to do with the <clears throat> pandemic. Um I definitely think that their ad revenue is taking a hit and for a lot of websites that are, you know, smaller or operating on very low margins, um I I'm I I'm skeptical. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird to hear them say, I, I haven't actually seen that of, of people saying that it's not related to COVID. That's like just batshit crazy. Like, obviously mm-hmm. that's what it is. Um, but I have a lot of thoughts about that. Yeah. There's a, you know, there are some companies who have been laying people off and I'm sure we both know, you know, we both know who that company is or what those companies are. Um, it, but it's interesting too, because then the websites that are still taking pitches, they just get like flooded. So it's almost like it, <laughs> You're you're still in like not a great boat right now because you have to have a a pitch that's like that maybe has to be better than basically like it's harder to to get a pitch accepted right now I think because so right. many people are flooding these sites and it's awesome like like it's awesome that there are sites that are still taking pitches right but um there's this Facebook group I don't know if you're you're a part of it but it's the Games Journals Facebook group I don't know it's a bunch of game journalists uh, on there and they not pretty, that one. They but they pretty much just like um, share opportunities and you know if somebody tweets out that they're looking for somebody uh, that you know they're hiring looking for somebody to cover Resident Evil or Call of Duty whatever it is, yeah. um, and so yeah like uh, you'll see that on there and then every like it'll get a bunch of likes and then probably all of those people are pitching plus the people who were gonna pitch anyway, I it's just tough man like 
I don't I feel like you're like not in that much better of a spot right now than you were you know before when it, it when uh you know it's hard enough to get a pitch accepted anyway right mm-hmm. and now there are like fewer sites there to begin with so well and this kind of circles back around to what we were talking about at the beginning because a lot again you can have a pretty solid pitch but that solid pitch might not be accepted in favor of someone with a you know arguably silly premise or like half baked premise but who is known to the editors who are taking the pitches right because then that writer could tweet about it and then get more traction on their article which you know is maybe arguably not as good as somebody else's who who has like a really good interview in there good information i don't know yeah it's tough it's just really tough it's yeah it's it it's it, it almost goes against your your natural instinct of, of like oh i just want to be a good writer and hone my craft and hone my skill and then you don't have as much of a following as another person and yet they get hired or they get a pitch accepted over you it's very yeah, frustrating i i don't want i don't want to like veer into like ethics in video game yeah, yeah, journalism yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this, a whole other this is just this is just how not just video games work but a lot of different industries work like that's that's why networking is such a huge thing even outside of games like there there are professional conferences in which people network like that's that's how this professional adult world operates um and it's just maybe a little bit more pronounced in like video game journalism just because again the pool is very small um of people who are kind of like on the inside and there is an extremely large pool of people um on the outside or even like somewhat in the middle (laughs) right Mm -hmm. um which i think is probably where you and i fall i don't know if, I don't uh, know. You agree with that assessment, I, but I, I don't know. It's tough because, like, three or four years ago, if I had known that I would be writing for IGN and, like, you know, whatever, like th- that, I'd be pretty, like, I'd be applying for jobs that are full time in this regard and, like, feeling like I actually have a chance of getting them, I wouldn't have believed you. But yeah, you're right. Like, I, I don't know that I'm like that much closer than I was three years ago. Like, I'm a little closer, but. Mm-hmm. it's just so tough to get there right so yeah um yeah it's definitely strange and then I, the other point that that i that i've been thinking about a lot is um again my initial instinct i do this a lot like i'll have this initial thought and it's usually wrong and then i'll assess it and then I'll see what happens um so so yeah my initial thought was i'm like confused i'm like why are sites taking a hit right now like people are staying home and they're and and like I feel like if anything they should have more of a of an audience or you know people are looking at their sites more people are playing more video games that's that's true that's a fact so mm-hmm. which means that they're looking at more guides or looking at more websites but I guess evidently yeah these sites are taking a hit I just don't see the correlation well there. it's because it's because people aren't buying as much stuff because we are kind of entering this uncertain crisis time so people have stopped buying things which means that like people aren't going to be buying that Razer keyboard um, that's on a gaming site. So yeah, so websites it, are losing that ad revenue because advertisers aren't going to advertise to people who either don't have the money or aren't going to be willing to spend the money. Yeah, that's a right? great point. Yeah, so all these like affiliate links that a lot of these sites rely on are out the window now. Right, or or if they're still there, you know, diminished amount of money is coming in from them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really fascinating. Um, but yeah, I would, I, I'm, I'm somebody who loves like uh, writing about, you know, sort of, sort of like dry facts. Uh, you, I guess you could say like some people mm-hmm. might not find it as interesting, but like NPD reports or, you know, most downloaded games on a platform, whatever it is, any sort of stats like that. I love, I would love to see some sort of stats on, you know uh like i guess digital sales specifically right now and see like a like a chart or something on on how that's changed over the past few months 
Um, yeah. I'd just be really curious. But like hard numbers, right? Like you always, that's another thing too with these stats. They're always like weird and skewed. Like this is in North America only, and this is in this region only, retail only. And Nintendo doesn't do digital. Like all yeah, this there's, stuff. Yeah, there's no, it, it, it's, there's no clear like definitive third party that's impartial where you can get a lot of these statistics a lot of them are coming from companies or vested interests that want to make certain regions look good for investors Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. it it does make it really difficult to find the sort of objective information that you're talking about yeah yeah for real yeah uh yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I guess, I mean, one thing you can think about, too, is, like, if a company isn't talking about their sales, then it's probably not good. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> yeah. Like, how many, like, how often do you hear Sony say, PS4 is at 100 million, 105 million, 110 million, and then, like, Xbox, you don't, you don't, you're like, we don't even know what the actual number is, right? Or, like, Nintendo with Switch. Switch is at, you know, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million. Right. Yeah, that's one thing I've learned. Yeah, if you don't hear it. If you don't hear anything, that's not a good sign. Well, speaking of not hearing <laughs> hearing anything and it not being a good sign, um, people might not remember that Dead Rising was a thing. Um, <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> thank you. I was very, very proud of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're actually here today to talk about Dead Rising, um, which, you know, is a surprisingly prolific series, despite it being... It, it's almost been five years since the last game came out yeah um it's it and this this game dominated last gen consoles like Mm -hmm. you know dead rising one and two really kind of i i I think demonstrated what the hardware was capable of and kind of like wowed people at the time um i'm not sure that it does the same anymore but uh it's it's one of the weirder and cooler franchise to, fr- yeah, franchises to come out and it's like it's been totally absent since the fourth one came out on current gen consoles and kind of was a wet fart um, <laughs> basically to, yeah <laughs> to say the least yeah um, well and and the thing with that is that the studio closed down that they made it so it's capcom right but Mm -hmm. specifically um with that one um i believe uh, capcom vancouver uh yeah so they closed down so like that doesn't mean another studio can't take the reins on that but that's still like a hump they have to get over there um but yeah i have a lot of thoughts so this is (laughs) this is one of my favorite capcom series and on the first game in, in particular is one of my favorite games of all time and yeah, to your point of like it pushes the hardware and all that, it it, it did, and, and it rode that zombie wave back before zombies were just you know, it's like laughable how <laughs> back before ten seasons of The Walking Dead. Right. Yeah. So the first one, um, developed by Capcom, came out in two thousand six. Let me make yep. sure that's right. Yeah, two thousand six for the Xbox three hundred and sixty. So that's another point I wanted to bring up about this series. It's been weird with its exclusivity, and so that I feel like maybe hurt it a little bit um so the first game launched on 360 and never came to ps3 Mm -hmm. uh and and so you know i guess at the time the 360 was dominating anyway so that wasn't a huge deal but yeah this first game was really strange um so the premise of it uh, i don't know i mean some people listening might not know about this game um the premise is that you're in the mall you're in a mall and you are trapped there essentially and you have to escape and you have 72 hours to do so and there is sort of a uh, like a real time clock counting down, and yeah. uh, the, the the other premise is that there are all these psychopaths, which are basically bosses, and they're just fucking bananas, man. Like there's one that's a clown that juggles chainsaws. This other one, it's like a like a butch lesbian like cop. Like, like I don't know what that. She's got these like women tied up. It's really strange. I don't know that you could pull that off these days. But um, there's like a religious cult in there that it's just so strange these this family of hunters and a lot of people i guess were turned off by the by the time aspect sort of like majora's mask Mm -hmm. um and that actually scared me at first as well but well it does it does put kind of like this this maybe unexpected pressure right right from the start yeah which is both good and bad and some for some people it's not their cup of tea at all right 
Yeah. Um, and so, like, if, if you're not into that, I totally get that. And that's actually why some of the newer games, like, sort of ditched that, or at least they didn't make that the primary mode. There's, like, a, a separate timed mode that they have in the newer games just to sort of, like, uh, uh, appeal to a, a wider audience, I guess. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And, and again, to the point of, like, the, the, te- the tech, pushing the tech, like, there were a lot of zombies on screen. And I remember, like, even when Dead Rising 3 came out, that was, a, I think, a launch title for the Xbox One. People, you know, they were, they were really touting, like, you know, the amount of zombies on screen. And at this point, I just don't know that that matters. Like, that doesn't make the game good, that there are, you know, 500 zombies on screen at one time, or 1,000 zombies, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, I, if anything, Days Gone really proved that I, I don't think people care about that anymore. At the <laughs> yeah, point. Exactly, you're right. Yeah. But but my favorite thing about the, the, the first game is how it balances this, like, you know, dire dark situation with humor and i don't know that the other games after that really captured it as well uh, like i know that the, the newer games have humor in them but for some reason it just feels like it, it misses they miss the mark when compared to the first one yeah like so one of, one of the important parts of the premise of the original dead rising is that you you are playing frank west who is a reporter who has gone to a number of extremely hostile environments to get, you know, the latest scoops and stories, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he decides that he wants to cover this zombie mall event. (laughs) Already, Um, I'm sold. (laughs) And, and, like, the opening cutscene on its own was, like, one of the the early video game memes um, on the internet. And, like, the the helicopter pilots are like trying to tell him what you know don't don't go to this mall you know it's it's very dangerous and he just turns to them and goes i covered wards wards you know <laughs> and then he jumps out of the helicopter onto yeah. the roof of the mall right and that's kind of where the game starts yeah so then um you know one of one of the things you can do is like uh, recruit survivors and uh you you know you're rewarded for doing that for bringing as many survivors as you can. But the thing is, is certain survivors only show up at certain times and you know, you need to time, you basically have to schedule your, your, your plan out, like plan out your time and where you're going to be. Cause if you're on the other end of the mall and there's a survivor on one end, and you're not going to make it. It's a whole thing. and You miss people. So there's that aspect. There's the, like, uh, there's like the, the cooking food aspect. If you, there's like a supermarket in the mall and you like, you can like cook pizzas and stuff and that, that gives you health and certain bonuses. Um, it's just really interesting and it's really arcadey. I feel like these days games that come out are so focused on realism. Right. And that's, and that's cool. There's a place for that. But also there's a place for a weird game where you have you're like making these like juice concoctions to make you run really fast like it's just like <laughs> totally it doesn't make any sense yeah and... it it you know that played both in its favor and against it i think because a lot of people like the game never outright explains a lot of that stuff right um, yeah so you have to kind of discover it on your own and on the one hand it has like this really thrilling sense of discovery and on the other hand you don't necessarily as a new player coming in know what's going on it's all very daunting it seems very random you don't necessarily see what the correlations are between different things um but i like i can it's one of those things where um the game's just so it, it takes a lot of joy in the getting around like in in getting around the mall there's so much joy in this game just because in order to get around the mall you have to kill zombies and to kill zombies you have to use the the items you find in the various stores and this game has just a creative and crazy amount of things that you can kill zombies with oh man it's so funny and and especially like yeah, so, like, not only that, but you, th- there are a, a wide number of, uh, like, different clothing items you can wear. Like, there, you can go into the kid shop and wear kids' clothes, and it's, like, really tight on your character. <laughs> it's, like, that <laughs> looks like a, like, a, like, a t- like a tube top or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's really funny. And the other thing that's really funny, too, is there are all these melee attacks that are all based on wrestling moves. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if you remember that. And yeah. you can like suplex them and st- <laughs> suplex zombies. It's just w- when you start adding all these things together, it it starts to it starts to develop this sense of personality that I feel like a lot of zombie games just don't have. Like I feel like Dead Rising has way more personality than Days Gone, even though Days Gone might be objectively a better game. I guess I don't. Maybe not. I don't know. But it. It's just so funny. I would I would much rather play Dead Rising and laugh and and sort of make fun of it in a way than than Days Gone. You know that a game that is really high budget and is touted as like you know uh, Sony one of Sony's biggest games. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, like the the refreshing thing about uh, Dead Rising is you kind of mentioned the humor. Um, but like it's it's building off of the building blocks of one of the greatest horror like genres of all time like rise of the living dead um, right and that or dawn dawn of the dead night of the night of the living dead night dawn of the living dead there's dawn. there's a lot of living dead movies the, <laughs> the first one is about a bunch of people trapped in a mall um which is exactly what this game is like kind of in a way almost spoofing right um, there are it, moments in this game that are played straight, but a lot of it, a lot of the game is uh, filled with jokes or, um, you know, very, like you mentioned, very arcadey games or uh, just non-serious moments that kind of even out the br- brutal, brutal murdering of zombies. Right. And and it's so wild, too, because, like, you start out in a mall. I'm going to spoil it. Hope yeah, you're okay it. with spoiling a 14 year old game. Um, <laughs> the ending, you're you you're in like it's like a tank battle. There's like this army soldier guy fighting you in a tank, and you're like, how did I end up here? Like, what is <laughs> <laughs> this does, does not make any sense. Um, yeah, so it's just co- crazy, like the like how much it covers. Oh, Dawn of the Dead, both original were in a mall. Romero okay. commentary and commercial. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so it's sort of like you're, like you said, a spoof and it's satire, but there are horrifying moments in it mm-hmm. as well, and I just love that balance. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to point out, and this is maybe something that's niche or like really weird to talk about, but I I really resonate with the trophy list and the achievement, I guess achievement list at the time, um, because it it required you to do all this stuff that. Like, you would never do in a game. But the one thing that stands out is there's this mode called over or Infinity Mode, is what it's called. Mm-hmm. And basically how it works is you're in the mall, and your goal is to just survive as long as you can, hence the name Infinity Mode. And the, the catch is that your health is constantly depleting. Like, there's nothing you can do. So you have to eat food to replenish your health, and, like, um, you, you can't just sit in one spot, basically. And there's this achievement for surviving seven days and each day in the game is two hours so it's a 14 hour long trophy you have to do there and i just remember like trying this and like failing on day five and you have to restart and all this stuff and it's just so wild like you have to like go and hide in a specific spot and wait for your health to drop down just just barely you know to you where you have hardly any health and then you eat a whole pizza and then your your health fills up and then you can walk away and then come back and then eat another whatever ice cream and then you know <laughs> fill up your health and and all while zombies are around you and these psychopath you know bosses which by the way some of these bosses i don't know that they would be able to pull them off these days like some of them were kind of questionable like i think there's like an asian one who's just it, it's just it's like they're i don't want to say it's racist but it's like I don't think you would be able to do that these days. And maybe that's, that's part of the charm, right? Like it's, it's sort of like, um, it, it's, it's captured in this, what, what is it? Lightning in a bottle, I guess is what you could say, where you, you're not gonna be able to do that again anymore. And, and I, I, that's why I think it's so special. And, and, and that's why the other games, I feel like maybe don't, um, aren't, weren't as successful. They tried to go too serious. Like the second one you play is this character whose like daughter is dying. And I don't know if that was like a response to, uh, the last of us, or maybe the last of us hadn't come out then. I don't know. But anyway, it's like too serious. And I'm like, Oh geez, <laughs> we're doing this now. Daughter, you got to save the dying daughter. Like I'm not, no, just put me back in the mall with Frank West. Yeah. I, I people, people really bonded with Frank and he became kind of the series recurring, 
almost protagonist after this. Like there, I don't know that any of the other games, maybe Dead Rising Three, starred Frank West. Um, but yeah. Uh, so in the fourth, he's in the fourth one as well because it, it's okay. yeah. There was um, I think it was like the complete edition. It's called Frank's Big Package. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course it is because of course it is. Um, yeah, huh. Now you got me thinking about, like, will we ever see this again? Probably. I'm sure we haven't seen The Last of Us. I mean, especially with Capcom being in such a resurgence now with their games. You know, I'm sure they're making a lot of money and maybe they can afford to take a a chance on another Dead Rising game. But like I said before, it's I don't know that you can do it effectively now. Like, you can't. I just feel like part of its charm is that it was kind of janky. Like I hate I don't want to like advocate for janky games, but like <laughs> No, just... no, I, I think you're I think you're right. Like there there is a certain charm in like an unrefined set of good ideas. Right. Um that are made with like a uh, passion behind them. Mm-hmm. Um and I honestly like it... how do I how do I put this? Um so this game was directed by uh, Kaiji Inafune. Yeah. Um, who uh, people probably recognize as like the like his two like some of his most prominent things are like he designed Mega Man and he designed right. the Street Fighter <laughs> franchise and like he has done so many different things. His name was basically inseparable from. Uh, Mega Man for decades uh, and he also but he also wound up doing things like executive producing uh, Resident Evil 4 or producing The Legend of Zelda the Minish Cap and this is someone who is like very very willing to do um, strange things very willing to go out on a limb for weird stories um, Actually, fun fun fact. Last week I talked about uh, Lost Planet Extreme Condition. Oh, nice. That's another uh, Capcom game. It's another Capcom game, but it's also another game produced by um, Kaiji Inafune. Uh, and he also wrote the original story for the game. So hmm. he he's th- just this very prolific presence in the, in the industry. And I think that, um, like, for all the crap that, like, Mighty Number no. 9 got, Oh god. Um I think <laughs> that his weakness is following up on his ideas. That's a great point. Um his because that that is like Mighty Number no. 9 had some good like mechanics in it, but its weakness was wh- it was trying to emulate Mega Man. And right. a lot of his biggest successes have been kind of like taking taking these risks and like doing weird things and just going out on a limb and he has had the amount of like social um cachet kind of again like the connections in his industry to get uh his weird ideas off the ground which um are really neat and cool i guess like like part of part of why we wouldn't see a game like dead rising again today is because it is a like a it'd be a very technically difficult game to do right um especially for the first time but but b also it's becoming more expensive to make games for consoles sure um and so you it it's rare it's harder and harder for kind of like scrappy people to get their ideas out that way um so we'll always have janky games but i don't necessarily know that capcom is going to is going to make a scrappy dead rising game like dead rising 5 will be just as colossal as dead rising 4 probably even more so right um and i'm yeah and i just i don't know that that's as attractive to me and and really, I mean, think about that, like, behind the scenes. Like, you're working at Capcom, and you're pitching an idea for Dead Rising. And, and you say, yeah, I want to make it, like, shittier than, <laughs> than, than, <laughs> than the fourth version. Y- you can't do that. But, like, that's kind of, like, what I want, in a way. It's just a weird <laughs> thing. It's just weird. Yeah. There's, you can't please everybody. But 
I, I love what you said about Capcom and and, and um, what uh, I, I always forget how to how do you pronounce this guy's name? Um, Kaiji Inafune. Inafune? In a, yeah. Kaiji, yeah, yeah. Um, I love what you said about him about how he he struggles with following up on games. One thing I wanted to ask you is you were talking about Lost Planet. I've never actually played the Lost Planet games. Mm-hmm. Um, have you played uh, like the whole series or? or I played After the first one. I I played the first one. I dem like I I played like kind of like behind the scenes at E three back when it was getting shown. I played some of the third one, and I also played a little bit of the second one. Okay. Um, and it's a game that has never had like a coherent vision for what it's supposed to be. The first uh, game see. was like some weird, interesting attempt at like a space opera mixed with a monster hunting game and that sounds awesome <laughs> it, the fir- honestly i i got the first one used for five dollars at the time i highly recommend it it has a great grappling hook mechanic and it's a lot of fun to play and it has mechs and it's super fun uh the second one was an entirely online game in the early days of the xbox 360 oh that's right uh, oh so man yes that- i remember that that did not go super well. That's when everybody was trying to make everything online. Yeah. Um, and then the third one was trying to get back to kind of what made the first one really good. But um, the story the story went bigger and was more coherent. But it was also not great. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, when that came out. I think I was working at GameStop when that came out. Um it was an interesting crowd of people coming in to get that game. It was, um, it, I was just very underwhelmed by what I played behind the yeah. scenes. And so I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to spend my money and play this. Right. Well, but I think that's, uh, I think, you know, in talking about Capcom, I think that's, um, I just sort of realized that, that, you know, they have so many of these franchises that are really diverse. I mean, yeah, they, they've got resident evil and even within resident evil there are all these different versions that are that play you know pretty differently you've got your action games which a lot of people don't like but if you're Mm -hmm. into that there's you know there's that there's the more horror style there's sort of the mix between the two and then there's the other like weird you know online games or whatever but then you've got like monster hunter dead rising street fighter lost planet which you know like i said i'm not too familiar with but based on how you described it makes it sound freaking awesome i mean like i (laughs) On, it's so weird to me how they haven't been able to nail a formula for Lost Planet, and they've just been like, it, it should be so much better than it is. I, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah, a crime. Yeah, yeah, and then you know they've got stuff like uh, obviously Mega Man and Devil May Cry. I think they're one of the like AAA studios with the most diverse portfolio. I think. Yeah, like they're they're like the scrappiest triple A studio. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess explains how Dead Rising came to be in the first place. Mhm. But anyway, yeah, I mean like you mentioned before, you guys might not have like played these games or whatever. I think it's tough too to recommend the first one cuz like we've discussed it's so janky, but if you can put yourself in the mindset of somebody in 2006, I think you should give it a a, a shot. Now, if the if the time the time limit turns you off, uh, the newer games sort of streamline that a little bit, so you 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 might have a better time with the newer ones. But yeah, specifically the the first one, I always have a, a special place in my heart for it. So yeah, it's, I, and, I love and it. I, I I should also say like there are things in it that have not aged well. Oh no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, like it like it controls like ass. Like it yes. absolutely control. And even they they ported it to PS4 and and Xbox One, or maybe it was just PS4. I don't know. But anyway, it's still like not great. So like I don't know. Yeah, there's not like an amazing way to play it. The you know these days like a you know like a remake or anything like that. But yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, it's it, it's it, it's old. You can tell. <laughs> it, it's old. You can tell, and it's also like you were talking a little bit about kind of like. Oh, there might be some racist caricatures in here. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm not advocating for that. I'm not yeah, advocating yeah. for that. But like it it's it's weird how how fast things have developed in the last I guess 14 years since mm-hmm. it came out, which oh boy. Oh man. I'm I'm uh, offended that you even said that. <laughs> that it, that it's been that long. Um <laughs> uh, but 
like it, it's weird seeing how far like society has advanced where like yeah this was totally acceptable in a game it, it, um. not not only was it like acceptable like it, people like liked it they were like encouraging yeah yeah like keep doing that that's funny and then yeah you're right yeah now look now look at us like d- can you imagine if capcom put out a dead rising with like a racist caricature in it i, I see I, I, like, and i i'm just like vaguely remembering like you know i i think there was one that was like kind of like um like one of the one of the bosses was a like like a cup more than a couple of them were like coded gay Right, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not portrayed with any kind of like nuance or like respect. I guess. Oh no, yeah. Um, and like I mentioned before, that the like cop, the right. female cop, she like God, could you put the, like she has she has these survivors like tied up and shit. Like oh she's man, she's doing some she's doing some bad shit. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So yeah, I just. I, I just don't know that you could do it the, the same and like, way. And, like, maybe you shouldn't do it the same way. But, yeah. like, think outside the box a little bit so you aren't having to rely on those stereotypes for, like, chainsaw juggling clown is a great thing. Think four <laughs> yeah. things like that. You right. can make fun of clowns. Yeah, no, yeah, nobody likes clowns. That's fine. <laughs> Fuck clowns. <laughs> um, the other thing, too, that I, I just remembered this. There's a version of Dead Rising on the Wii and it's called Chop Till You Drop. And I guess oh, really? it's like a you use the nunchuck to like whatever, like to slice zombies up and stuff. That was back when there was all, there was sometimes a, a, a Wii version of a you know mainline AAA game that was coming out on the you know contemporary consoles that was just totally watered down. Like there was this uh, Dead Space, like like a light gun shooter game that came out at the same time. Really strange. Anyway, yeah. Fun Dead fact. Rising. Uh, just, just like fun question for you. Um, how many movies do you think are based on Dead Rising? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. Um, it's funny too be- because Dead Rising, in and of itself, is based off of a movie, right? Right. So, so, so then, yeah. And there's like the what is it like Shaun of the Dead, like those sort yeah. of like <laughs> spoof movies. Yeah. Right. There's I don't know. There's no way to tell. But yeah, that. Uh, it's a it's a great premise. I love well, it. I just I can I can tell you how many movies there are. Oh, and I I was shocked. Um, oh. there are three. Um, oh, only so three. <laughs> Kaiji Inafune directed one called Zombrex: Dead Rising Sun. Um, oh, you mean actually? Oh, oh, I I misunderstood your question. You meant like actual Dead Rising licensed? Yeah, yeah, Dead actual oh. Dead Rising movies. I didn't know there were any. Okay, I'm sorry. Go right. ahead. Um, then there was one in 2015 called Dead Rising Watchtower, and then huh. there was one in 2016 called Dead Rising Endgame, and there may or may not be plans to make a fourth Dead Rising film. Are they all live action, or are they yes, animated? Yes, they, they're, they're all live action, um, uh, and the 2010 one was directed by Kaiji Inafune, um, and it's a Japanese film. The other two are Western films. Uh, and the, basically, (laughs) um, do you know the streaming service Crackle? Yeah. Uh, those two, those two films released as Crackle exclusives. Oh, I bet those did well. Um, but (laughs) they, the, the Dead Rising Watchtower and Endgame, um, they both star Frank West, um, (laughs) and... Uh, do you want to know who plays Frank West? Please tell me. I'm dying to know. <laughs> so, uh, Rob Riggle, uh, w- who people might be familiar with from The Daily Show, uh, oh. plays Frank West. Uh, he was also in, like, 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. Yeah. Um, Step oh, he, Brothers. he looks like him. He looks like Frank. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh. At first, I was like, that's weird casting, but I get it. Um, yeah interesting yeah so rob riggle is the leading man of a dead rising franchise that we never knew existed until like today wow and it's crazy that there are three you said there's three of them yeah there are three of them holy moly i gotta check these out i bet they're horrible (laughs) i bet they're god awful and i'm excited they're on (laughs) they're on crackle right now you can watch them maybe 
maybe we'll have to you'll have to come back we'll do like a like a watch along <laughs> podcast or like a like a wrap up when we talk about the dead rising film franchise oh um, <laughs> and and you know it's funny you brought me onto the show to talk about dead rising and you're the one informing me about this weird god i had no idea that there were three movies <laughs> also also they the last the last that was heard about it um they were thinking about either making another film or making a crackle original series uh that would be in the style of 24 meets the walking dead huh so like but for dead rising which that's kind of a cool concept yeah that's what i was just gonna say on paper that sounds great I just don't. <laughs> I have no faith that they can pull it God, off, but no. it sounds great. No, no, no. Even 24 kind of after like season two went off the rails a little bit. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Well, that actually brings up another topic, which is its own episode, I'm sure, of the of the show of, you know, video games and films and, you know, what's better tying a game to a, a show or a film and all this. So that's like a whole other discussion there. Also... Do you know that just in a as like another weird connection to Lost Planet, because uh, we were talking about it. Frank West appears as a player, like a playable character in the multiplayer. I believe it, and I also it. in Lost Planet too. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, Capcom loves to do that. I was just playing Resident Evil Three, and there's a there's like a, a toy store you can go into, and there's just Mega Man merch all over the place, and. In Dead Rising One, there's a uh, there's a uh, the Mega Man Blaster you can use. And oh, that's, that's like, right. And that's like a really really useful weapon because it pretty much one hits every zombie, mm-hmm. uh, and it's got like a lot of ammo or something. Yeah, yeah. So they lo- Capcom loves to do that to sort of like you know cross promote their franchises. It's kind of it's kind of fun. I like that. Do you know that there's also a uh, cameo where Frank West appears in Left for Dead Two? I, f- I I feel like I knew that, but I don't remember it. Um, <laughs> is it? Is, he's not a playable character, is he? No. Um, like Valve released like some add-on content oh, yeah. for Left 4 Dead Two, and there in it, there's like a message where Frank talks to Otis. Hmm. Yeah. 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 That's kind of cool, man. I miss Left 4 Dead. Damn it. Me what too. It, why'd you got to bring that up? Now I'm all sad. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm all sad that we've been talking about a lot of these franchises this episode, I guess. And the recurring theme is we would like more of these, please, but make them good. Yeah. And and also you probably can't make them good because it, it, <laughs> that's that's like the that's like the one hang up. Like, I don't have a lot of faith at all that if you were to make another one, that it would be good. Yeah. I mean, I guess I have some faith that like a Left for Dead 3 would be good. Uh, oh yeah, okay. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that, huh? I remember there was a report last year that, like, I don't know. Apparently, one was in the works, and then I remember Valve commented like a couple days later, and they were like, "Hard no, very hard <laughs> no. We're not making." Left Why? Left Why are like, they allergic to money? What do you do? They're not allergic to money. That that's the thing. They don't need to. <laughs> they could just let Steam do its own thing. They literally don't need to do anything. They can just yeah. sit there, and Steam just prints money for them. Yeah, it's true. They're... Yeah, sad, 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 sad. Yeah, gamers are gamers are interesting, man. They, it, it, we, I mean, I, when you think about like, sort of our community, the, the, one of the like recurring themes is just fans begging for stuff. Have you noticed that? Like, when's the next Nintendo Direct? When's Half Life Three? When you know all this stuff when, before Resident Evil Three was announced? When's Resident Evil Three? It's just fans begging, like pleading, pleading, and then sometimes developers and publishers will do the thing, but a lot of times they don't, and then you know, then it becomes a you know, where's the Metroid Prime trilogy? Where's uh you know whatever Mother Three, whatever it is? It's and then it's just it becomes a meme, and then blah blah blah, and then everybody cries. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, especially now, everyone is much more pr- prone to crying now. Oh my god, yes. I just cried this morning. I cried I'm I cried before we recorded. It was oh, great. I'm sorry. No, it was fine. It was a good cry. Oh, good a- cry. Okay. Yeah, cuz my I was holding my cat. That's it. 
That's <laughs> that's Joseph, all. you're precious. <laughs> that's all. I just was holding him, and he was being cute, and I cried. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, go Dead Rising, go Cats, Valve make Left for Dead three. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, maybe maybe like it's it's been four years. Maybe in like another two years, try try making another Left for Dead. And if that right. works out, make another Lost Planet, please. But good yeah. this time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm totally with you there. I think Capcom is on an upswing right now, so it it's uh, I don't think it's outlandish for for to expect something like that from them. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll get cocky and make some make some cool new stuff. Yeah. Um. Well. Okay. Final final micro words about like why 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 should this game be considered a best game? Period. <laughs> It's so it went earlier when you when you were telling me that that's sort of like the premise here. I like don't know that it is, but just it's it's t- for me personally. Like mm-hmm. it just hit me at the right time. I remember I was it's one of these games that I was like afraid of because of the time limit and it was just so hard and like I overcame it and like it's just special to me. I don't know that I would consider it a best game of all time, but I think it's important and it's uh it's a game that sort of paved the way for a lot of other games out there mm-hmm. good good or bad um but yeah I, I i mean why i love it it's funny it's it, it balances the the humor and the sort of dark dire situations i actually really like the time mechanic it's uh it's just weird man it's 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 capcom at its weirdest kind of and, I, like just as you as you were describing it like that that's dark and absurd like it's kind of a perfect game to resonate with our times yeah absolutely and es- oh my god especially our times right like an outbreak being isolated right. in a mall it's very timely um it's, yeah and the same with resident evil 3 i've been playing that and i don't know if you've played that yet but the but like the the way it opens there's this like news report about an outbreak and like how they're telling people to stay home and all this shit and i'm like what sorcery is this i'm like i I felt weird like i've never felt that way about a game before because it felt i was like is it or i was like is this like a live feed of the news right now what the (laughs) fuck is going on like it's weird (laughs) so yeah yeah that's so yeah that's that's why i like it so much just this that blend of humor and darkness and just timeliness i guess for right now yeah right now is a good time to play it you got free time and it makes sense right so yeah okay well thank you so much for uh coming on making the case for dead rising giving us an excuse to kind of dive into it a little bit and talk about it Um, i appreciate that yeah i appreciate you having me like i said it's just so bizarre right it's like it's um yeah I, i feel like uh almost like lucky in a way to like be able to make these connections with with people like just just by staring at a piece of plastic with glass on it and it's (laughs) i mean if you think about it like that it's kind of crazy right yeah yeah so i really appreciate it yeah thank you so much you know just as like kind of a parting thought like i do find it very interesting that i don't necessarily think that dead rising despite being loosely based on like the dawn of the dead um doesn't really seem to have as much like an anti-capitalist sentiment in it oh um, yeah no not really at all i yeah, mean if anything not... it's really more pro all of those things because all of those things are what allow frank to kind of get through this like the anti-capitalist message comes from like the cause of the outbreak and everything but the solution to his outbreak is by using all of those things that capitalism has created. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you just pretty much the mall is is a toy that you have at your disposal. Right. And you can do whatever you want. It's like a huge playground. Um th- just just a final thought I had as you were kind of giving your closing statements. Um where can people find you? Where can they find your work? Uh, yeah, so um, obviously I mentioned before I have my podcast Active Quest, which we are about to record an episode of in about 
20 minutes here. Jeez, um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's totally fine. I think it's cool. I think it's cool to just have like podcasts lined up. I have I have one I'm doing tomorrow as well. Um, so yeah, you can find us. Uh, it's uh, at Active Quest Show on Twitter. I'm on Twitter at Joseph Yaden. And then in terms of my work, you can still find all my work on PlayStation Lifestyle. Uh, I've done a few reviews for them and, and stuff that uh, is a little bit more evergreen. Um and then, yeah, I've, I've done a few wikis for IGN. So I just did the Warzone, the Call of Duty Warzone wiki. Mm-hmm. So you can check that out. I did uh, Astral Chain for them, Code Vein as well. Uh, and then I did the original mo- uh, single-player Modern Warfare uh, uh, wiki as well. So you can check that out on IGN. Okay, cool. And and I don't know that you mentioned your personal Twitter. Where can people like follow oh, you? Oh, at Joseph Yaden. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Joseph. It was awesome having you on. It was awesome being here. You're awesome. I appreciate the invite, and I would love to come back on at some point. For sure. You, you're more than welcome. Friend of the show status bestowed. Oh, man. Am I, am I like, knighted? Is this, like, a knighting ceremony? <laughs> like a, yeah, there we go. Cool. <laughs> hey, and you know what? Same to you. You're always okay. welcome. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. We don't. Our show's a little bit different. We don't have like a like a topic sort of a thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, you just come and talk about news and what you've been playing. I, so. I'd be happy to come on anytime. Fucking a. Let's do it. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening to the show. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, at uh, Best Games Period is the place to do it. And if you really enjoyed the show and want to kind of take your support to the next level, head over to patreon.com slash best games period, where you can donate uh, a dollar or more per month and you get access to super exclusive, cool content, as well as, um, you know, knowing that you get to support the show. There's also some like a special uh, Patreon discord where you can talk um, certain levels of, of backers get uh, kind of input on what they would like to see on the show and also get to direct the course of a super special monthly program just for patrons. So that being said, um, we'll see you next time for episode 150 of the best games period. We'll see you on the flip Bye bye.
哪里。